Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Down to Earth Gardening and today I'm out here talking about some pesky little critters um, that are wreaking havoc in my garden. So it's not always rainbows and unicorns out here. Gardens can be problematic and we want to share some of the issues that we've had with um, diseases or pests and what's, what's working and what's not working. So today I am struggling with voles. Um, I've had this issue before. Um, it's funny, they're similar to moles. However, moles are meat eaters. So I always remember it because M for mole means meat. So you'll find them tunneling, usually in your lawn looking for grubs. And voles, they look very similar and they tunnel very similarly, uh, but they are vegetarians. So V for vole, vegetarian. That's how I remember it anyway. Uh, but they are after herbaceous materials, so they're looking for plant roots, um, tubers, um, tree roots, any kind of vegetable roots, and sometimes bark. You usually see them summer and fall uh, gnawing on things and tunneling. So right now it's midsummer, so um, that's pretty appropriate for them. But I have these nice new raised beds and I have some plants that are coming along pretty well in these. And I've noticed in this pumpkin bed here, I've got some pumpkins and I also have butternut squash, this giant hole here. So this is one area um, where somebody has found a home and I want to prevent them from eating the roots of this uh, this, this vegetable bed. So I have another raised bed here where there's also some damage and this is my little dahlia bed which I was really proud of. And so this here you can see the dahlia wilted and toppled over. This is a sure sign here. So you can see where they've gnawed off the tuber and eaten it. So sometimes you'll just come out in the morning and your plants will be detached, toppled over, wilted. So this one I noticed yesterday. And if we don't do something about this, they're just gonna go through the whole bed. And then this one is long gone here, but then this one here is pretty new. So clear off, they've chewed it. So again, what will happen is you'll just come out one morning and the plants will be toppled over and dead. So it's really disheartening. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I've trapped them before. Uh, I had a problem in another garden where I came out one morning and some of my Baptista plants were just toppled over. So I do not like to use pesticides, so my first plan of attack is to use a good old-fashioned mouse trap. I've had great success with apples because they do like fruits and vegetables um, and I put a little bit of peanut butter on there. So I'm going to show you how I trap it and then I'll come back out tomorrow morning and show you my results. So hopefully I'll be successful. Okay, so we're setting up the trap now. It is just a good old-fashioned mouse trap with a little bit of peanut butter to glue my apple on here. And what you want to do is just find a real recent hole and put the trap right in front of it so when they pop out it's going to get them. Now they like to feed at dawn or during the night so they like it dark. Um, in the past I've had great success um, doing this with five gallon buckets over the mouse trap so it's dark. Um, so we have a small space here. We're going to try using just a little recycled box. Okay, and here's trap number two, set up the same way. Good old-fashioned mouse trap with a little peanut butter and some apple. Um, in the past, I've used green apples and they love them, but what I had on hand was um, just a red apple here. And we've got our box. So we want to cover the trap and the hole. So this fits in here pretty good. And that's it. Mm -hmm. 
So I talked a little bit earlier about voles eating my dahlia tubers. Um, and I know it's a common problem and gardening is a matter of trial and error. So I like to share with you what works and what doesn't work for me as well. Um, and you're welcome to share your tips with me. I would love to hear from all of you. But I'm continuing to struggle with bowls out here. I did try the uh, mousetrap with the apple slices. It was green apple and peanut butter um, with my bucket over it. And all I caught was ants. So they've really done a number on this bed. I have had uh, success with that method in previous years, but for some reason this year they've outsmarted me. So I do like to go organic. Um, I don't like to use chemicals. So I really just wanna keep trying to troubleshoot this. I have lost in this raised bed probably six or eight dahlias. Um, previous to this and so what I've done is I have filled the bed with some other things I did put some marigolds in the mix because I hear that rodents and chipmunks really don't like the scent of the marigolds and that really doesn't seem to be a deterrent but they are pretty anyway um, so the most recent damage here is on this dahlia and this was going to be a beautiful autumn sunburst orange and you can see where they've tunneled here. They do tunnel very similar to that of moles, but you won't see the mounding that the moles create when they tunnel. And here you have it. You can see the damage, everything's wilted and the tuber is gone. So you'll see sometimes they'll just be flopped over, but these, this poor dahlia has really died a slow brutal death here. So what I'm going to try this time and I wanted to share with you is I'm going to try castor oil. Um, I've heard a lot of people having great success with castor oil and it is a, a natural way to deal with voles and moles as well and it's biodegradable. Um, it's basically just a multi-purpose vegetable oil that people have been using for thousands of years. So we're gonna try it as a spray and I'm gonna mix it. I'm just gonna show you what I have. So I've got my jug of castor oil. Um, and you want regular old castor oil. Don't buy the unscented because it's really the scent that's going to deter them or repel them. And then I'm gonna mix it with dish soap. So I'm gonna use some Dawn. So my supplies are here. Um, and then I have a sprayer. I have two options for sprayers. I just wanted to show you at home. I do have the pump sprayer here, which is a little more tedious, but you can mix it right here in the tank. Great for garden and lawn. Um, or I also have my hose end sprayer here with the dial on it which I do like because you don't have to pre-mix anything. You can just go and pour your ingredients right in here and you can adjust the dial. So I find that you can cover a nice big area with this and it's just a little easier to use. So I'm going to mix mine, but I will tell you that the recipe per gallon of water is going to be six ounces of castor oil to about two tablespoons of Dawn. So I really don't need that much. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the mixture because I don't wanna have it hanging around. I'm not really sure that it's gonna keep well. So I'm going to just make a quart. So I'm gonna use roughly two ounces in the sprayer of the castor oil and really just a half a tablespoon of the Dawn. So again, if you're doing a gallon, you want six ounces of the castor oil. Don't buy the unscented. You want the regular castor oil um, and you want two tablespoons of dish soap to one gallon of water. But that's only if you're gonna use it all when you're spraying. So we're gonna go ahead and spray. We're going to spray the whole surface of this bed and then hopefully we'll get some rain or I'm gonna water it in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you and show you the process. Okay, 
So now I'm going to go and grab the hose. So I'm going to make sure that this is set on the dial to one ounce here. So it's, uh, you want to spray it at a rate of one ounce per gallon. And again, I'm going to spray the surface here.